So on June 21st, I visited the little square foot garden out at the river. It had been oh, probably at least three weeks since I visited last. And it's always so fun to jump out of my car and run over to the garden just to see what's growing. And sometimes I'm disappointed at what I find. But most of the times I'm thrilled. I see little seedlings coming up a lot. However, this time I did realize I had a problem with rabbits this year. And um, it was because I walked out into the back of the property. And that's where my big garden is. And rabbits just scurried in every direction out of my garden when I walked back there. And I thought, oh my goodness. And they have been eating every one of my strawberries. And so I've been carrying my camera around to see if I could catch one on camera because there's a lot of them. And one morning I walked out and sure enough there was one right outside my square foot garden on the other side of the fence. And I hope he stays on the other side of the fence. Um, and anyway, so I was able to catch him on camera a little bit just to show you guys this is going to be a problem for me this year. And I think it's because um, we there was a little barn cat that lived around the area. I think he actually lived in our barn. He was the neighbor's cat. And he, I think, got hit by a car last year. So he died. And possibly he's been keeping this population of rabbits under control for us. So I don't know that for sure. But I do know that I have a problem with rabbits this year. And I've been trying to use something called um, liquid fence. I don't know if it's working or not. Because I'm not really out here enough to apply it regularly. But we'll see how it goes. I'm trying to spray it every time I come out. So there's the little rabbit for you. So really that's the only problem I saw when I visited. So I, the first thing I did when I got here on June 21st is I harvested some potatoes. These are called Tom Thumb potatoes. And they grow to the size of about 2 to 3 inches. So most of these were not mature yet. They're still at the new potato stage, especially the very small ones. But some of them did get pretty mature and um, I just love them. I just feel so blessed whenever I can visit my garden and go out and harvest something and cook it up immediately and I think it's just a real it's a real treat. You can't buy fresh dug potatoes at the grocery store so anyway I'm always enjoying them. I had a couple of uh, servings then right when we arrived and this is what I ended up with. So when I pulled up my potatoes I went in behind everywhere I pulled them out and I planted green beans. I planted the jade bush beans and I showed you how I plant them and I think it was in May that I, I did a video on that for you. And so I basically watered them in good and then when I returned here on June 30th they were up and growing and here are the ones that I planted in May and they are going to be ready to harvest here I think within about another week or two. I'm already harvesting them at my home. So I noticed the tops were falling over on some of my scallions, so I went ahead, I pulled those out. And remember, I'm always planting more. I think that fresh new growth is just wonderful. And so I don't cut these down and let them regrow. But you can do that, especially if you're a hobby gardener. You know, you can regrow a lot of things, just cut it back and let it regrow, and that's, that's fun to do. Um, and I went ahead, I pulled out this lettuce. I've been thinning my lettuce and just letting this one get big. And this is basically just an oak leaf lettuce. It's, it doesn't really even form a head. Um, it's a loose leaf lettuce. But um, I went ahead and harvested it. And I get a lot of questions about why I just go ahead and pull the whole thing. And I don't cut it down and let it regrow. And it basically just has a, to do with the flavor level of something that keeps regrowing once you cut it. And for me, I like the fresh new growth flavor of just about anything. So um, especially my lettuces, they get pr bitter pretty quick, especially as you're going into the hot months. And there's no sense in me cutting this down and then letting it regrow. So when I return, I have some leaves that are most likely will be bitter at that point. So I planted some carrots behind it and you know you plant 16 carrots per square foot and when I um, checked on June 30th they had already germinated so that was great. So in about 70 days I'll be enjoying some nice sweet carrots and not better lettuce okay because I would have had to leave that lettuce there and that take up that whole entire square foot for that one lettuce okay. And I also had some spinach that was bolting. We had a very hot May, and so most of the spinach that I planted in the spring really didn't do very well. Um, I guess because I wasn't here to water, you know, I can't water this garden, and then with the hot temperatures, it bolted. So um, I went ahead and got some of the young leaves off of there. And then over here in the corner of this bed, 
I planted some basil. I forgot when I planted that, but uh, there were a lot of seedlings in here and I really needed to thin it. So I thinned it down to two plants because this is only about half a square. Normally I think I plant about anywhere from two to four per square foot. It just depends on the variety that I'm growing. And this plant here is called Rat's Tail. I don't know where that name comes from, but at any rate, I grew this for the first time about, uh, let's see, five years ago, I think. And it's basically just a little plant um, that produces these little pods, little, you know, they're seed pods, really, um, just like peas or green beans or anything. And they actually are not sweet like a pea, and they're not um, like a green bean, though they have more of the texture of a green bean. Um, they're just uh, kind of a little bit of a bitter taste. Uh, I like it. They're prolific. You can grow a lot of these in a very short amount of time. And the flowers do attract pollinators to your garden. Now I prepare these by putting them in a stir fry. And they're pretty tender if you use the little ones. I also really enjoy them in pasta. So I ended up harvesting about a pound and a half, and that's enough for me for now. I want to go ahead and pull the plant out, and behind it, I planted spinach. And I know you're thinking, why would I plant spinach when I'm going into the hot months? Well, it's actually been very cool in June, and I didn't expect it to be so cool. So I went ahead and planted spinach because... I guess it was about two or three years ago, I had a wonderful harvest of spinach in the middle of July in this garden, in this bed, as a matter of fact. And so I went ahead and planted it because I just need my spinach fix, I guess. <laughs> my first planting bolted on me, so this one, maybe it'll do better. And when I returned on June 30th, they germinated and they were up and growing. Just to give you an idea of the temperatures we've been experiencing, um, on June 30th, I checked my... Uh, temperature on my porch and it was 48 degrees at 9 30 in the morning so i just give you an idea now it wasn't that cold in the sunshine our porch is covered but um that just give you an idea just how cool it's been and that's probably why the spinach germinated so easily so i also have some romaine lettuce growing over here and since it's been cool I think it might just hang in there. I did taste it just to see if it was getting bitter because sometimes it'll get bitter before it starts to bolt. So um, it wasn't bitter yet. Um, I'm going to go ahead and leave it in the bed. I know it's going to be several weeks before I can get back here. So cross my fingers that um, it doesn't get too hot. <laughs> and then my tomatoes are doing great. This is called a Thai pink egg. And this is an heirloom here called Uncle Mark Bagby. I think I have about seven different um, tomato plants in the garden. And then I have green beans planted all throughout. And then I have this red vein sorrel here. And I have some red Reuben basil. My chives and parsley are doing very well. And so is the dill. It's forming little flower heads, which I've been using a lot. And then at the base of all of my tomato plants, I went ahead and cut off the lower stems just to help with airflow, um, just to increase the air circulation around the plants. I just wanted to clean them up a little bit and keep them off the soil. So this is basically what I ended up with um, June 21st. That's what I took home with me. So there you go. If you have any comments, please leave them down below the video. I always read my comments. And also, if you haven't already, make sure you click that little bell off to the right of the subscribe button and you'll receive all notifications for my channel. And just as a reminder, I am only on Google Plus and YouTube. I'm not on Facebook, Twitter, all that. So whenever you're out there sharing my videos on your favorite social media platform, it sure does help me. Thanks so much for watching and y'all have a beautiful day.